Yeah, that's right. Welcome to Asteroid Challenge Fight Club. Stay cool. This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents... Zoo. You're right, sir. Slow your rotation, stellar fool. Doesn't matter what I believe. Hit the button, baby. Party dance time. All right, party people. Planet X is back again. First we had Eris, then Sedna, then 2012 VP113. And now there's a new most distant object in our solar system. And it strengthens the hypothetical case for an unseen large planet at the outer boundaries of our solar system. We are over at Popular Mechanics. Newly discovered object revives speculation of Planet X. And remember, the same man's Planet X is any planet outside of the Kuiper Belt. So it is real. Eris was the original Planet X. And now the hits keep on coming. The likely dwarf planet adds to the mounting evidence of a dark super Earth at the outer boundary of our solar system. Wait, there's a dark super Earth at the edge of our solar system? That would explain NASA's Schadenfreude chicanery over the last 42 years, possibly. And there's a Katy Perry ad at the top of this. That can't be a good sign. The object, V774104, was announced Wednesday at the American Astronomical Society's Division for Planetary Sciences meeting in National Harbor, Maryland. Scott Shepard of Carnegie Institute characterized the potential planet as between 300 and 600 miles in diameter, on par with a medium-sized moon. This makes it a likely dwarf planet, as it's roughly the size of Ceres in the asteroid belt. And please remember, our solar system is so diverse, we have a new gold medalist in distance from the sun. At 103 astronomical units out, or 103 times the distance of the sun to Earth, this is the most distant object ever recorded, besting Eris, Sedna, and 2012 VP113. It also adds on to a case built on the discovery of the latter, whose unusual orbit points to the tug of a distant planetary mass object. Though previous surveys have ruled out anything above the size of Saturn, there could be a Neptune-sized world, or a super Earth. Why it gotta be dark, man? Or even two super dark Earths that would be farther out and too dark and distant to detect. For now, though, this is just speculation that can't be ruled out. Whatever, man. There's also the possibility that the objects were fluffed and tugged into their present orbits by a passing star around the time of the formation of the solar system. If the orbit turns out to be an orbit that stays far away from the giant planet region, it's an orbit that's unperturbed by the orbit of the discovered giant planets. What? That sounds even mean, man. So we can look to see if this orbit falls in line with what we'd expect for the orbit of this hypothetical giant planet out there. Did you know a dozen smaller objects were discovered along with a new object, but V774104 is the most distant of them, and the others are believed to be Kuiper Belt objects, according to Shepard. There are two scenarios. I gotta talk about Mike Brown again, don't I? I'm gonna have to talk about that dude. You know him, he killed Pluto. He goes around telling everybody, I killed Pluto. He goes around telling everybody, I killed Pluto. I've seen him walk up to like a group of eight year olds going, hey, guess what? I killed Pluto. And they all started crying. He's like, yeah, that's science, you little bitches. Wait, wait a second. I don't know if that was a dream or a real life. So I don't want to slander anybody. No, but seriously, Mike Brown killed Pluto with his bare hands all by himself. All right, there are two scenarios for the orbit of the new object, which will determine what value it is to planetary scientists. V774104 may be part of the inner OART cloud, a candy land of fantasy and imagination that scientists have come up with and proved with a Texas Instruments calculator. They describe it as a region farther out than the Kuiper Belt, where Pluto and Eris live in harmony, although Eris does have a moon named Discordia. You see, it's where most long-period comets are believed to have originated. It is a snowball factory. It could be oblong, like that of Sedna, another inner OART cloud object. That one comes as close as 86 astronomical units and goes as far out as 397 astronomical units, giving it one of the strangest orbits in our entire solar system. Are you listening to the words that are coming out of my mouth? And the second option, oh man, number two is always shit, is that it's a scattered disk object, a realm of worlds sitting just outside the Kuiper Belt. That scenario will make it all in line 
with most of the other known dwarf planets and dwarf planet candidates. With a size that would make it one of about 47 objects listed as likely dwarf planets under Eris's co-discoverer Mike Brown's Pluto Killer definition of dwarf planets. Yeah, that dude is like the walking IAU in a nutshell. I'm sorry, Mike, that, that I went too far with that one. <laughs> He's not that bad. The final determination will come from follow-up observations. First in a few weeks, then in a few months. And then in like seven or eight years, we will get a little photograph. And it'll be at least three or four pixels. And everybody will go, wow, man, those three or four pixels are amazing. I'm so amazed at what technology can do today. And hey, only three more years until they replace the Hubble. <laughs> Takes 28 years to build a space telescope, people. Progress. It sure looks funny in 2015. This object could be extremely interesting if it doesn't come much closer than where it is right now. Or it could be another typical scattered KBO, Shepard said. What the hell did I do? I just broke the whole article. I just broke it right in half. I broke the whole damn article. The final determination will come from follow-up observations. First, oh, I've read that shit. I do that all the time. Let's get back to what Shepard was saying. He was saying in the next year, where Shepard and his team will be able to see if the object has moved. Then in the, and then next year, where Shepard and his team will be able to see if the object has moved toward or away from Earth, an indication of its orbit. All right, did you hear that? Science just said, by next year, then astronomy boys will be able to tell if Planet X is moving toward or away from Earth. That's fascinating, right? I mean, that's got to win me at least five instant down thumbs. You can say Planet X, people start bleeding out their butts, which is disgusting on so many levels. So, I will try to avoid using the label of the celestial object that shall not be named. If this newly discovered object ends up being an inner or cloud object, it could prove very valuable in helping astronomers understand the solar system. Shepard and co-discoverer Chad Trujillo plan on studying the object in more detail to correctly determine its orbit. Trujillo already has a few new objects under his belt, having co-discovered Eris and two other dwarf planets, Make Make and Hanume, as well as Sedna. You know, come to think of it, that is kind of weird. That ever since Mike Brown and Chadwick Trujillo discovered Eris, Mike Brown went around going, I kill Pluto, I kill Pluto, I kill Pluto. And Trujillo was like, yeah, well, dude, I'm going to go find a bunch of new planets. And I'm going to tell the people what is going on. And Mike Brown said, I kill Pluto. I kill Pluto. And then Neil deGrasse Tyson was like, hey, I know exactly how old Pluto is. And then Bill Nye was like, I fucking hate fucking climate change deniers. And I would smoke them in my pipe. But smoking is bad. <sighs> All right. Science hurts sometimes. But it never lies to you. Asterisk, 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 hit the button. Go. Turn it off. This object could be extremely interesting if it doesn't come much closer than where it is right now. Or it could be another typical scattered Kuiper Belt object. I don't even know what that means, man. Like, KBOs are the last thing I would call typical. And this is some weird code. He's saying, like, yeah, it could be extremely interesting if it doesn't come much closer to Earth than where it is right now. And then imagine how much more interesting it could be if it comes a lot closer to Earth. Because it doesn't sound like they have any clue about this planet. Planetoid, baby star, alien spaceship, whatever. Fake turd floating in the sky. And by sky, I mean outer space. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, I was talking about asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. Turn off video now. I love your voice. I love you too. Okay, peace out. God bless everyone. Planet X. All right, I'll prove this shit up. Me and my tag team partner are going to give you all Planet X data visualized. I'm going to tell you we're going to show you what these gentlemen have been talking about for a while. I hope. Should I have said that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, now I'm turning it off. In case you didn't get it, the one main thing you need to know from this video is that Mike Brown killed Pluto. And then he said, hey, dudes, I found Xena++ a year ago, October 7th, and then never mentioned it again. And I can't get a freaking tweet from that guy ever because he's like the Pope of astronomy, but but in a but in a but in a NASA way, even though it doesn't work for NASA. Anyway, good job, Chad and Shepard. Now 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 I'm turning it off.